Hello everybody, thank you for joining us. Today we are going to explore two faces and done with, or essentially the same generic face, done with two different levels of crosshatch. We have done crosshatching exercises before, so you could check those out as well. But here is yet another one that is going to be instrumental in one way or the other to determine certain other elements that one could tap into when using a crosshatch exercise. So we're going to put our generic face together. Here we are putting down a nose. In the mouth and let's do the same here. And we're doing this in real time so that uh, we can truly determine how long the uh, exercise truly takes. If we have to at any juncture, any point in the video, uh, if you have to like speed up the contents, if it is more instrumental, we will definitely let you know. But for now, our intent is to uh, maintain the actual uh, flow. So we will go rather quickly because we are doing a sketch. We are not doing a finished portrait. And we are comparing again two levels of crosshatch and moreover we are trying the two levels of crosshatch with the same tool so the tool that we're going to use is just a generic pen and it could be this or well it could be a sharpie for the generic I think this looks like a point three if I would be honest um, with the thickness of it seems to be a point three so one uh, just going with one tool is our uh, is is the uh, uh, point that we will maintain so just going over some lines first and I think we have enough to work with here so uh, always like crosshatch works of course best in a light source let's give this particular portrait a pair of eyebrows and let us do the same here We have to make sure that for this particular exercise the pen is consistently moving because we again if we have to truly compare the crosshatch styles in terms of a sketch then we have to maintain that quick flow it's just like if you if you are a well-known artist and if you're at a convention and uh, one of your die-hard fans they can stop by need a quick work of art like they'll call it a work of art of course uh, from you you want to uh, do this quickly and have them going back to their business so in that sense 
we have to maintain a quicker quicker flow than we would with a particularly uh, well, let's say contracted uh, piece of work okay so we have enough uh, elements here to work with and we start off with the face on this side and let's do some, some more and the reason why we're putting these things down is because we want to tap into these still like minimal features as we go into the cross hat so this one you're going to do a loose cross hatch loose as in uh, more like wider and open lines so the life source is apparently coming from this side for in in either case And cross edge, of course, we have always maintained is best uh, taken uh, when it is along the flow of the shape. Now, sometimes, of course, artists will like, for instance, the noise coming down, but here it is like rounder, so we go like that, go like that here, and here uh, we could have gone that way maybe on this side but still okay to go like that it seems to be uh, taking its effect and then on the left going that way but maintaining that cross edge on the lower lip same flow on the lower lip here and then coming down putting like again wide lines all through if there is some kind of uh, facial feature here we can again go over and just put in the cross hatch that way now around here we have to do the same thing now it can be a set of lines and people you if you source artwork and check out like different artists you'll be able to see that many artists especially in pop culture and in um, let's say like comic book format or even like illustrations uh, that that center around polit political like satire we will see loser cross hatch lines working because they do they are like very very easy to work with as you've seen that we have quickly uh, done uh, a tonal exercise by maintaining uh, a l loose longer stroke crosshatch for this particular face. And there we have a more loose cross hat. Now we could like fade out some more here if we want. We could add one more part here if we want. If we want to like you know show an additional tint, and then uh, have some lines there. But the challenge again, we have to use the same tool. We can again concentrate the wider again lines here to make this part of the face darker and just keep on like you know going like that until we have the fill but the wider array of lines the open more open lines have to be visible that is the entire challenge of this exercise so do try it out like this will be a lot of fun but uh, moving to this face and Again, the cross head does not have to be exactly the same as it is here, but here we're going to maintain a more closer, and if possible, a more 
filled out more uh, tone heavy crosshatch and it will take a little longer than this for sure but we will be able to see the difference so one point actually that we could have done was that if I would have made some notes we could have gone with the same um, crosshatch sequence but doesn't necessarily have to be that because if you are doing a slightly different crosshatch you might have something else in mind for this particular uh, image here should have put a shadow there actually under the nose or beside it it actually works better and we'll do the same here in a second but again filling this out more closely is the entire purpose of the exercise so comparatively looking a little more intricate this uh, portion might not like vary that much but we can still make it work differently Again, along the side of the chin, curving that shape in. Very, very important in terms of a tone concentration exercise. Right here, again, we will use the same exercise, concentration of like straight lines, but these will be done again in a more intricate manner. So just more tightly knit together. leaving that out a little bit just for additional tone and then going back and forth in this area with the lines back and forth back and forth back and forth just to fill out this entire area till this face line so here now this this will pretty much be our last portion of the cross hatch on this side of the face and then we can have you good folks getting back to your work or to uh, trying this exercise out yourself extremely important uh, that we use again the same to uh, the same point for this exercise so fade interact and we have some sort of thing going there again 
it's it's quite okay to when we're like doing a cross hatch that is more closely more more close more intricate in terms of the lines to actually start off with a bit of fill like this but it still counts as a cross hatch because after all like we're working with ink and there's not too much permissibility of mistakes and there we have it so let's just put a varying tone of line here Let's put something here too. Again, back forth, back forth. You do not have to worry about the direction necessarily when you're trying to concentrate a set of lines into an area to achieve like a fill tone. So there we have it, like subtle differences. But these differences now you can amp up. For instance, if you just go here like that, cross, hence the term cross hatch, fade out a little bit here. Even if we go like this, like add more concentrated tone here. If you want to like really hefty up the under chin but we don't really well we don't have to because otherwise we would have to like balance this out too but we can do that and again intricate and closely defined cross hatch is best for that exercise so there we have it two different varying levels of cross hatch on a similar generic sketch please do try it out yourself it's a lot of fun and sometimes like this is much better than this but usually I would prefer this because it's just a little more detail going in so uh, please do subscribe keep in touch we put out content every day thank you for watching and have yourself a wonderful day